The Faith Chapel United Pentecostal Church, located at One Renfield Avenue in Kingston, Jamaica, welcomes you to our broadcast, Behold, He Cometh. It is indeed our pleasure to have you watching and listening in on our service today. As end-time prophecies unfold themselves, revealing the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no better opportune time to give your life to Jesus than today. As you listen in, may the Lord richly bless you in all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in his word. Indeed, he's real. We live in a time where men have tried to put people on. Many have tried to seek out the origins of God. But their minds, their mortal minds, ah, it's just not.
They will lift, lift up our hands and their voice to you. And your servant, Lord, now comes to break bread. We invite at this time to speak to us, Reverend Dr. Lyndon Johnson and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Come on, can we just lift those hands on to the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. It is worth it. That is really what we mean when we say is worth it. It is worth it. Whatever price you have paid, whatever tears you have cried, whatever lonely roads you have walked on, Whatever times of rejection and anguish and pain and the scars we bear, the wounds we carry, is worth it. Hallelujah. Come on, is there somebody in the house who can? You have your story. We are not mere numbers. We are people with fingerprints and with DNA and we have our individual stories to tell of this road I'm just grateful to almighty God for this opportunity to be here I thank him for journeying mercies praise God it is it was a long journey reaching here I'm glad I came before the choir sang <laughs> just grateful to all of the pastors and bishops leaders in this house patron grizzle and to all of the other pastors who assist here in Faith Chapel to all the noble men and women of God visiting from different assemblies, choir that just ministered to all the saints and all the friends, people of goodwill, who have devoted these moments to worship. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank God for sparing me. I thank God. For mercy. There is something on my heart, and I, I really want you to pray because I hope I can find the words to say what I what I feel. And so where my words are inadequate, then I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will compensate. It'll, it's his word, will make up the difference. Could you turn with me to the book of St. John chapter 12. God's willing, I will be with you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night will be more teaching. I will be in town, so I'll be earlier. <laughs> um, so I look forward to being here. We want to just, you know, do some teaching tomorrow night. But tonight, there's really just this thing on my heart, and I Hallelujah. Have you found St. John chapter 12, verses 3 to 7? Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said. Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. <laughs> and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus... Let her alone. Come on, tell somebody, leave me alone. Let her alone against the day of my burying. As she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me. Yeah, not always. Could we bow our heads for a moment, please? Blessed Holy Father. As we pour forth the content of our hearts. Our praises. We ask that you receive that which is on the altar. 
We ask that you take the glory, we pray. These are your people, the sheep of your pastors. And so here we lay before you, Lord. Let there be a moment of renewal, a moment when strength is restored, when feeble hands no longer hang low and no longer remain feeble, when we walk away with hope in our hearts, with strength in our bones. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, somebody lift your hands to Almighty God and say in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. Wiping glory with glory. That's what's on my heart. Wiping glory with glory. Let me go straight to the crux of where that is. She wiped his feet with her hair. The Bible said that the hair is the glory of the woman. So, here is what we are going after tonight. Thank you. Wiping glory. I came here tonight. I felt just this awesome sense of worship. And of praise, and all the way, roughly two plus hours driving, I, was, I just kept thinking through my own life. I kept thinking through my own experiences. I kept thinking through some of the things that have been through painful days and also successful days, and things for which we are known, and things for which we have become accomplished. But there comes a moment when you have got to take your glory, and then you have got to look at what you have going for you. You're about to look at where God has taken you from and where he has positioned you. And then a moment arrives when the, the, the value of what is in the box of Spikenard does not matter anymore. Because what now matters is to wipe his feet. A moment arrives when that which is contained in the box. Which for this woman was one year of her life. One year. For many of us, it may be a decade. For some, it's even longer. It is the essence of your youth and your strength. For some of us to walk away from careless living, to devote your life to God. And for decades, you have walked before him. So in this box you carry are some valuable years. Some have accomplished things, letters behind your name, letters before your name. You have accomplished assets and, 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 and stuff that people look at you and say, wow. But then a moment arrives when you just feel inadequate. And you somehow sense that irrespective of what I have, it's just not enough. Huh? Because something says he's worth way more than this. Huh? And so this woman carried her box of spike now. Huh? And she sensed that something was different about now. She sensed that this was a moment unlike any other. Sensed that I can't miss this moment. Something is different. There is something in the atmosphere. There is something I'm feeling in my heart. Huh? There is something swollen in my spirit. Huh? There is something expanding in the core huh, of my system. Huh, that needs to be poured out. Huh? That needs to be expressed. Huh? And so, come on. Is there anybody who understands what I'm talking about? Huh? So you know what you have been through. You know know what you have accomplished. You know where you have been. You know what they called you before you got saved. Now you know what you are called. Huh? And now you know who you are. So you come and say God, you deserve the glory. Is there somebody who understand what that means? 
Are there some worshipers in this house tonight? Huh? Come on, it's a night of worship. Huh? It is a night when we're going to take some glory huh? and wipe his glory. Mm. It's a night when we have to look at what you have going for you. For some of you, it's your health. Huh? Take your health and wipe his feet. Huh? For some of you, it's your letters behind your name. But you have got to just take the letters and just say, God, huh? you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy worthy to be praised uh, all that I am uh, and all I can ever hope to become uh, my dreams, my hopes uh, my accomplishments, wherever I've reached uh, is only worthy enough uh, to wipe your feet huh. come on somebody huh? It is that kind of night huh, when we have got to lose ourselves. Huh. It's that kind of night when etiquette is not so important anymore. Huh. It's that kind of night huh, when you have got to re just refuse to believe their report huh, and refuse to be subject to their views and feelings huh, because deep in your heart you realize huh, he is worthy. It's a night for worshipers. It's a night for some who understand. For this woman, it was raised in the previous chapter of a dead brother. Huh? But for some of us, there are different experiences. You know where God has taken you from. You know where you have been. Huh? Before you were stiff and starchy and stush, huh? they had some horrible names for you. Huh? I don't know about you. Hey, come on, can we talk to some real people here today? I was not Brother Johnson. I was Lindy Dreadful. <laughs> so when he can pluck you out of the mire, pluck you out of purposelessness, pluck you out of wayward living, pluck you out of careless lifestyle, turn me around. Huh? He planted my feet on higher ground. Huh? He gave me purpose. He gave me a praise. Huh? He gave me a reason to live. Huh? He gave me the ability to accomplish. Huh? And now that I'm here, huh? there is a moment I've got to take whatever it is huh? that is my glory and wipe it his feet it's a wiping of his feet night on Saturday gone we did some lawn cutting in Black River churchyard was bushy so it's got the lawn mowers we cut it some people believe that, well, if you're elder, reverent, and so on, you shouldn't be as sweaty and starchy and covered in the grass. And I thought about it, come and say, God, I thank you. Huh? Because I was cutting the grass, huh? but I was wiping his feet. Huh? Some of you may come to the church from time to time with a mop and with a broom. Huh? You may be wiping the floor, huh? but you are really wiping his feet. You stay up late huh, to prepare for your Sunday school lesson. Sometimes lonely, sometimes down, sometimes discouraged, sometimes disappointed. But when you reach here, huh, what you are doing, you are ministering unto the Lord. In the book of Exodus, the sons of Aaron were consecrated into the office of the priests. The Lord said, they shall minister unto me in the priest's office. And he uses a phrase that just captivates my heart, captures my imagination. He says, for glory and for beauty. Oh, God. It is for glory. It is for beauty. So the life we're living, it is for glory and for beauty. There are some things it brings us through that we've got to survive for glory and for beauty. You have been going through some rough times, but remember we have been consecrated into the office of the priest for glory. For beauty. Somebody wave your hands unto the Lord. We have always to remember and to never forget who we are. And whose we are. 
Sometimes we go through some bitter experiences that seem to stretch us and to strip us. And some moments when you felt like giving up and sometimes you... Come on, can, can you be truthful here tonight? Huh? Eh, it was not always looking good under your apostolic garb. Huh? Your look of apostolicity. Eh? <laughs> it was not always pretty because under the adornment were some pains. Huh? Uh, beneath the ties and the hats huh, were some tears. Huh? Some wounds and some hurts. Huh? Some bruises and some rejections. Huh? Sometimes you wonder in the midst of a crowd like this. Huh, why do I feel so alone? But then in the midst of that, you learn to preach huh, the most important message you've ever preached in your life. Huh, which is not to a congregation of this size, huh, but to the crowd of one. Huh. We remember when you had to look in the mirror. Do you remember when you became your own preacher? Do you remember when the sound of your own voice huh, was the voice of the encourager? Huh? And so you had to say to yourself, huh, why art thou cast down? Thou know my soul. Uh, why art thou disquieted within me? Uh, there is no other voice to help you. Uh, but you had to compel yourself. Uh, hope thou in God. Uh, and you felt like shutting up. Uh, but then something said. Uh, I shall yet. Never wanted to praise him. Never wanted to rejoice. Huh? You felt like giving in to your seasons. Huh? You felt like becoming circumstantial. Huh? You felt like staying under the circumstances. Huh? Under the weather. Huh? But then something called out to you. Huh? What are you doing under there? And then you decided huh, enough is enough. Huh? I can't stay here huh? because I know in whom I believe. Huh? I know. Hallelujah. Do you remember those times huh, when you had to dodge javelins huh, of careless people who threw things to destroy who you are? Huh? Uh, people who use comments to try to wipe you out. Huh? Intimidated by your gifting and your talent. Huh? Intimidated by where God was taking you. Rather than join you, they tried to kill you. Huh? Do you remember when you had to duck? Huh? But I heard David in Psalm 18 huh, when he said, These be the words of the song that David wrote. Huh? In the day that God delivered him from the hand of all his enemies huh? and from the hand of Saul. Huh? And the Bible said, David wrote, huh? I will love thee, O Lord. Huh? The Lord is my strength, is my, is my strong tower, is my refuge, my hide. And he went on and said, I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised. And by calling on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, he said, so shall I be saved. Come on, is there somebody going through some stuff? Tonight is a good night to call upon the Lord. A very good night to pour out your heart. Huh? A good night to look back where he has taken you from. Huh? To look at where you were. To look at what you had going against you. Come on somebody, let's worship a little bit. Huh? For David, it was quite horrible. As I say, I'm really not going to, you know. I, I, I want you to understand, brethren, the depth of what is on my heart. For David, he had to overcome a lot of things. So when he wrote that, he carried a lot of feelings. For many of you, you have, to, you have to struggle with the issue of generational curses. As he did. Did you know that? David had to deal and wrestle with the issue of generational curse. What is the brother J? Which David? See him one. What was it? He had a great grandmother. Who know her name? Ruth. She had the misfortune to be born in a country called Moab. Of her, it is written in the law, an Ammonite nor a Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord to their 10th generation. He was number four. By law, he needed six more generations to purge out the bad blood. 
Do you know, understand those of you are students of the Psalms, where you, why you don't see many images of the temple in his writings? He doesn't describe how the priest operates. Huh? It seems alien to him. What you see him doing huh, is describing nature. You see him talking about things in the natural out there. The heavens declare your glory. Now you remember. Huh? And the firmament show his handiwork. Huh? His teacher had to be the deer. Huh? As the deer panted for the waters. Huh? So panted my soul after you. Huh? When he was tired of watching the deer. He had to look at the trees. Huh? The righteous shall be like the tree uh, planted by the rivers of water uh, he had to find comfort in what was around him it was for quite a while before I truly understood because for many of us coming to church is so usual that it doesn't really it doesn't evoke anything but now do you understand when David's faith Broke the curse. Come on, tell your neighbor the curse is broken. It don't matter who your papa was. Huh? It doesn't matter who grandpapa was. Huh? It doesn't matter where they were, what they did. Huh? Now that we are in Christ Jesus, huh? the curse is broken. Somebody better rejoice. Huh? I'm here to kick away the excuses huh? as to why you have not been accomplishing. Because of what mama did huh? and because of what papa did. Huh? But now we are in Christ. Huh? If any man be in Christ, huh? he the curse come on somebody it's rejoicing time the curse is broken it is over for years I couldn't understand I couldn't understand why did David's ambition why was it that a man of his worshipful character. Hallelujah. Why was it that his dream was I would rather be a doorkeeper. When you are under that exclusionary clause, huh? he was out there in the middle of nowhere looking at what was going on in the presence of God. Huh? And yet he said, I would rather be a doorkeeper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I'm always fascinated by Psalm 27. I Many of you know it by heart, but you don't really know it in its heart. Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Look at the man's circumstances. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to what? eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell though war should rise against me yeah, my heart shall not fear though an host should encamp against me in this in this will I be confident huh? hey but brothers and sisters in the middle of war in the middle of war in the middle of enemies in the middle of a horse and camp against you what was the man's dream one thing have I desired of the Lord huh? that will I seek after war around you that I may dwell in the house of the Lord huh? to behold the beauty Look at where his heart was. To be all the be So he was not wishing for victory. He was looking past victory. The Lord is already my light and my salvation. I don't have to fret now. So to wish to overcome my current enemy. That to local. That's not ambitious enough. When you are excluded from worship. His dream was one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
Somebody worship the king. What is your ambition? It is in the very same Psalm 27. He issues forth what I consider to be the prime directive. The primary directive for all of us. Captured in the verse. When thou sayest unto me. Seek ye my face. That is our directive. It is central to our existence. It is what our lives must revolve around. David was able to answer. Thy face Lord. Will I seek. For many of us. We have not gotten purposeful. Because we can't answer that question. Our hearts are not talking. Some hearts can't talk. Because these hearts are heavy. Hearts that can't talk. Because these hearts are broken. So you are walking in here with a scandal bag with your heart in about 10 little pieces. So you really don't have a proper answer to anything because of the, the brokenness of your heart. The heaviness of your heart. The sadness of your heart. The mournfulness. So when your heart should be answering to the call of purpose. Zion calling me. To a higher place of praise. Huh? There is no answer because you are concerned about dinner. Concerned about what we wear. Concerned about where to live. Huh? So there is no response to the heavenlies. Huh? The heavenlies issue. Seeking my face. Huh? But we are busy trying to survive. But there comes a moment when we're going to push away the clutter. Huh? Push away the busyness. Push away from the coachments. Huh? And just say, thy face. If there's somebody who can join me, lift your hands to God. Huh? And say, thy face, Lord. Thy face will I seek. Like many of us, David had to deal with the issue of dysfunctional parenting. In the very same Psalm 27, he tells us, did you read it? When my father and my mother, you think that easy? <laughs> when my father and my mother forsake me, that is the reason why many of us don't move. We're like Lot's wife. You hear the word of it. It's pulling you forward. But you're remembering that daddy never warned you. Oh, that don't mean fear chapel. <laughs> yeah. So you never hear about jackets here. Oh, not that one. Jamaican jacket. Your papa isn't your papa and your papa don't know. The one there. Rejection, pain. One young lady spoke to me many years ago. We're reasoning. She said, Brother Jay. And when she was talking to me, it was that maybe 20 years after whatever the incident, as a young girl, she had a younger sis sis sister, sibling, who was sickly. And that sister died. I don't know what this little girl could have done that in a moment, a fit of anger. Her mother looked at the little girl and said, I wish I you did dead. When I was talking to her, it was about 20, nearly to at least 20 years after that. And the only voice ringing in her head was a voice calling, I wish I you did dead. And so we had to help to cure that. David had to deal with the fact that his own father forgot him. Most important event in the history of their family. And his father forgot him. A bush. <laughs> Daddy pre-qualified whom he thought would be successful. He ushered them into the presence of Samuel. Forgot that he had a son named David. So had God chosen Eliab or Shammah or one of the big brothers. David would even know they had a meeting. 
But come on, somebody, I'm here to dry your tears. Huh? Because the elders tell us what is for you. Can't be unfee you. Huh? And if God be for you, if God be for you. So they try to exclude you. They try to eliminate you. They try to leave you out. Huh? But there is something that happens when God is in control. He determines the outcomes. Huh? So don't worry yourself. Huh? Stop fighting for position. Uh, stop feeling like the world is over because nobody recognizes you because God said I don't want these and that friends put the prophet into a dilemma you remember because remember he said to Jesse bring unto me all your sons what about all you don't understand Jesse presented what he in good faith considered to be all his sons. Because I'm a the papa. Him should I know. <laughs> so now when God eliminated all that were presented. The prophet of the one that did I really hear from God. Am I in the right house? Because the man said these are his sons. God said me no one none of them. You see what the problem some of you people put pre China. Can I encourage pastors a little bit because I have learned, I have learned to listen to two things when people are talk. One, what them say. And two, what they do and say. Don't laugh. You can very easily. One, two, three, five, six. What did I say? One, two, three, five, six. What did I not say? See, the only thing you can hear. It is the breaking of logical sequences. So when people are talking to you, don't just listen to what they might tell you. Listen also what they're not telling you. Which may be more important. Huh? So now that I drop out four, your duty is to find out. So what's wrong with four? How do you try? Why are you sweating when I say four? Why do you start to tremble when I say four? What is behind four? Let's flip it over and look underneath it. Because often that is where the problem is. Hidden beneath what they don't say. Amen, somebody. So now, David was left out in the middle of nowhere. Expected, didn't know what they did. But then God said, don't sit down. So the prophet now had to turn back to the father and ask, are these all your sons? And then daddy said, oops. How does it feel when your father look at you and say, oops. Should I sent you to school? Come on, I'm talking to some real people. Some of you struggle with this very matter. Should have supported your mama, but oops. Forgot you. Should have bought books for you in school because others you are brighter than I know, doctors and whatever, and you are struggling. And when you ask, Daddy, why? Oops. Forgot to you over the bush. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Huh? Especially when rejected and abandoned. Now in their sickly days, they see a more oopsie poopa. Guess is who of remind him. I'm sorry, you can't sign Patwa. All right. <laughs> but you have got to purge yourself of it. Come on, tell somebody, let go of the bitterness. Let go of the hatred. Let go of the hardness. Let go of the coolness. Let go of the pain you have carried. There comes a moment you have got to remember. Then the Lord will take me up. And here is a practical reason why you can't afford to keep hating that father or that mother. If your hands are filled with that bitterness and the hatred and the corrosiveness, where will you find space for purpose? Where will you find space for vision? Where will you find space? So come tell somebody, let it go. 
tonight is a night we let it go. Because glory. Huh? So now you have got to say, Lord, that was the price. I have to pay for the oil in my alabaster box. Huh? That is the price. That was my cost. That was my pain. David had to deal with the matter of jealous brethren. We won't labor that. Except to say, just after the Lord fill your hand with purpose and inspires you to read church early to pray, do not be surprised when the first person passes them. Hmm? They will look position. <laughs> Convention is coming up. Don't let it break you. Remember he to whom you're going to have to account for the call. So you can't go before God and say, Lord, they criticize me, so I stop praying. <laughs> when the Lord has this, what kind of excuse is that? Because one of the things I've said to people and be thus guided, men, brethren, and fathers, people of faith, chapel, and elsewhere. If pleasing God requires that a man hate you, and you please God, what can that man do about you? Nothing. If pleasing man requires that God hate you, when you please the man, can that man help you? So what is your good choice? Tell your neighbor, go please God. Stop trying to please men. Lift up your heart unto God. Come on, lift your hands, somebody. Hallelujah. Let us please God. And so now we're getting ready for the altar. Really, I'm, I didn't come to, you know, it's worship. Now do you understand with all that he went through? Why David said, I was glad. When last, anyway, you were glad. When somebody said, come, let's go to church. Let me look over a second. I don't like to look over. Especially Sunday night. Now let me look up. Sunday night and somebody said, let us go to church. You glad? Come on, scratch a little harder. <laughs> For some of you, it's been a long time since you turned up at church Sunday night. What could have pushed a man so just merely to be invited to the, church, to the church was a source of joy to him. Why was that so important? And for years it's a man. I couldn't understand until I realized what it feels like for your curse to be broken. So you were once excluded. You were once out of the loop. Huh? You were not a part of it. And now faith had overturned the curse. And the Lord says, Come. And then somebody said, David, you know, I'm going to church. God, I was glad when they said unto me, Come on, somebody. It's worship time. Hallelujah. Back to the woman as we close. Spinal is an essence. You don't just look at the raw material and it jump out at you. Here am I. Offer me. It comes out under pressure. Most of these are so-called essential oils. You have to put them under steam. Put them under pressure. And it is the pressure it goes under. That causes the fragrance. To come out. It is the conditions you subjected to. That caused what was a faint odor to be, become concentrated, to become no. So what you have done is you have changed the value placement. Huh? Because as just a raw material, it is just bush. Huh? But now that it has been processed, come on, some of you know what I'm talking about. Huh? Because all I'm explaining is what it felt like when you went through the pressure. Hmm? When you went through the process. Huh? When you went through the lonely days and nights. Huh? But you still hung on to God. Huh? When you felt like walking away, but something said, keep on keeping on. Huh? When you wanted to let go, but something said, this is not you. Huh? You are a warrior. You are a fighter. You can make it. Uh, you can stand. Uh, you don't have to give up. Uh. Don't you remember when you had to run out so you don't have to succumb? 
Don't nod your head, but I know <laughs> that a lot of us have untold stories that your step had well nigh slip. And somehow in the middle of wanting to go after Mrs. Spotty for something start to burn you. And you really desired because your body catch a fire. But then you had to put flesh under control. Like the priest of all, you had to recognize you have head and you have heart. And so heart said, I've been waiting for 20 years. Head said, you are a saint. That is why holiness unto the Lord is not on your heart. Can we just help somebody here tonight? Look at what the Lord did in his wisdom. He put the names of people on the heart of the priest. He put the discerning of the will of God, the Urim and the Tumim, lights and perfections on the heart of the priest. You know where he put holiness? Forehead. Why, Lord, why? Because if you dim the light, heart gets affected. Feelings. If you change the cologne or the perfume, come on, chemistry now. <laughs> so when you say, boy, I mean, many must share the same chemistry. There's reality to it. Because there are some odors and some scents that we pick up. Don't nod your head, but have you ever had been in the company of somebody who you don't like a bone in them body, but you like them cologne? And you gravitate towards them to smell them. There's a reason. It is the exact reason why Mrs. Um, musk. You know the musk there from which we get natural musk. When Mr. Musk wants to copulate. There are certain secretory glands him have. And him go squirt, squirt. And spray some something in the ear. And every female in heat. In a certain radius converges. Towards the source of the secretion. And so now in a vast wilderness he finds a wife. Do you notice there are colognes with my musk on it? <laughs> well what the chemists have done is to say. Well if this works for Mrs. Musk. We can maybe modify it and see what works for Mrs. Human. So you might have something more passion. Have her. And so when it is worn, it affects your mood. There's a whole branch called aromatherapy. What you smell affects your mood, your responses. So now you may be walking in the biggest Thompson chain reference Bible, big enough to be pushed on a wheelbarrow. Claiming to go have a prime meeting with a, a, bro, a brother you like. <laughs> and you left your house to go discuss Acts 238. <laughs> when you walk through his doorway, him have on musk. And, you and all of a sudden you forget about your big old reference Bible. Then he dims the light. And you settle down in the leather chair. Then he puts on some soft music. You see your mood? Then he says, you know what? We need some privacy. Let me close the doors and the blinds. You see the problem now? No, you understand why God can't put holiness by man's heart. If holiness was on the heart, Joseph couldn't resist Mrs. Potiphar. Because she played on him. She actually came on to him aggressively. Young man, testosterone slushing around his body. Strong chested. So when she said, come and lay with me, that was a privilege in their permissive society. But he had to allow his head. He had to say, I can't do this. And sin, come on, somebody for glory. So when you had to run from Mrs. Potiphar, huh, and when you had to run from Mr. Potiphar, huh, it is for a night like this, huh, when you can go back into memory lane, huh, and you can look at where God has taken you from, huh, and then you say, God, I'm so grateful that you saved me. I'm so grateful you have kept me. And now you take all of that and you wipe. Could we stand together? 300 pence. 
waste, what a waste. The Lord said, leave her alone. There is one last something extremely important that he mentioned. Against the day of my burying, she has kept this. So what was at play here, brothers and sisters? Please understand this because for some of you, your, your license to rejoice is not based on your yesterday. Not even on your today. But against a day to come. <laughs> and so the, she was embalming him. She was anointing his body against the day of his death and him not dead yet. So what took place, brethren? Huh? She had to step out of her realities. She had to step out of her today. She had to step out of her past. She had to walk away from what was. She now was operating in Jesus' future. So now in your past, you had a bad name. But in your future, ha, there is hope. Ha. In your past, you were rejected. In your past, you were broke. In your past, you were called backslider. In your past, your mama called you sorrow and pain. Hey, Jabez, are you mad talk? <laughs> Named after mama's pain. No hope was spoken into your heart. You became a monument to her yesterday. And this is what you bring into the arena. But comes a moment you have to say, I'm sick and tired of what was and what is. Huh? So now I'm going to step into what is to be. Huh? And so destiny calls with a voice that is so loud. Huh? I've now got to walk away from the now. Come on, somebody stepping away time. And so now in going into that tomorrow, she knew what it meant to then take her glory. Somebody has got to start to wipe his feet with her glory. With your glory. It's feet wiping time. Eh? Come on, for some of you might have just kneeled. For some of you will just wave your hands, but wipe your feet. Where is the psalmist in your I want somebody to sing, you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster. Where is the best singer who knows the song there? Come on, I want it ringing out before God tonight. Huh? Because somebody has got to become the voice. The voice of the crying. Huh? And the voice of the weeping. And the voice uh, of those who feel that life has pressured them and pressed them out of measure. Hallelujah. Come on, very quickly sing. You don't have to organize it neat, man. Just give her the mic. <laughs> Minister to the Lord. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbled to the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper. There's no place here for her kind. Still all she came through the tears that flushed her face. Till at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster and I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair, my hair. See, you were not there the night when Jesus found me. You
pouring oil without a measure into a little treasure box. Almighty God in these moments. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reigns.
giving us the a praise team continues in just ministering unto the Lord and leading us in, in praise. Tonight, don't let the moment pass. Don't be afraid to take your glory. It's a night when we can't be bashful. It's a night when we can't be stoosh. It's a night when we are about to forget about the this and the that. It's a night for a crazy praise. It's a night for somebody to decide. I love you, Lord. Hey, Sam, it's you. Lead us be our voices as we worship. Hallelujah. Before the throne is where we've come to offer praise and seek wisdom. You have torn the veil that Oh 